Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Liberty Challenge, and today we have the Computer War Tennis Shoes. Yes, that absurd title, the Computer War Tennis Shoes. It's our, uh, it's Disney's uh, foray into AI, or hybridization between man and machine. Could that be? Uh, is it pre-Tron? Is it uh, their first attempt at the M their own MCU? Medfield College Universe, because... Uh, well, this 1969 film, uh, which runs about an hour and a half long, stars Kurt Russell. Uh, it's one of three films that he appears in as part of a bigger kind of universe uh, that all centers around him and the other students and their dean, uh, and also a, a gangster of sorts. All in These students all go to Medfield College. Um, and also, the Medfield College also appears in Flubber and some other films that all made by Disney that all sort of technically live in the same universe, even though they, they really don't reference each other except when it comes to characters and premise. Uh, this one is the first one. It's 1969. It's the Computer Wars Head of Shoes. The next one uh, is the uh, Now You See Him, Now You Don't. And then the third one is The Strongest Man in the World, both of which were made in the early to mid-70s. So, yeah, we get a little bit of a trilogy out of this. Uh, again, like I said, they don't technically connect. It's always Kurt Russell getting messed up by science. Uh, here he gets the mind of all the brain power of a com sophisticated 1969 computer, um, <laughs> which is not very powerful, but at that point, uh, it's, it's almost like magic uh, to, the, to these primitive people. Uh, in the strongest man of the world, he's super strong, obviously. And now you see him now. Can now you don't? He can turn invisible, so or he has the means to make himself invisible. Uh, each time, I'm assuming because we haven't seen now you see him now you don't. We have seen strongest man in the world. Each time, uh, he comes into conflict with the dean played uh, by Joe Flynn, Dean Higgins, Joe Flynn. If you heard the man once you see the man once and hear his voice in a Disney film you you know him he's he's a uh, he's a Disney icon he's in so many things and uh, he's kind of an icon authoritarian character for that era uh, you also get William Shallert uh, who is uh, Professor Quigley he appears in two out of three of the films the two that we've seen so far and uh, he's sort of like a mentor, in a sense, a teacher to these kids who's trying to, you know, show them the, all the great things that science can do. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, the dean, the frustrated dean, is either always trying to get rid of the kids or exploit them. And he's not the only one, though. We also get a man by, uh, by the name of A.J. Arno, played by Cesar Romero. You might know Cesar Romero, some of you older folks, as the Joker from the Batman 1966 series. So, yeah, here he's a bit more tan, uh, but he always plays this sort of, I don't know, suave, but hard-edged for Disney. Uh, bad guy. He's He seems friendly enough, but he's got a dark side. And he uh, uses Kurt Russell. His name's uh, Dexter Riley. He uses Dexter Riley's uh, computative abilities to play the horses and make himself rich. Uh, meanwhile, schools are suddenly competing for him because apparently nobody can keep a secret. It's like, you know, the Incredible Hulk suddenly turns, Bruce Banner turns on the Hulk, he kind of has tries to keep it a secret. And there's only one guy coming after him. There's other people, superheroes and everything else, all get these special abilities. Uh, Dexter gets this power and suddenly everybody knows. And uh, everybody is out to exploit him. He gets to travel the world and meet all sorts of people that have, I don't know, really any, nothing to do with a guy who cuts diamonds, nothing to do with his brain power. Um, I, I don't know, it's just some really weird uh, setups that may have meant something in 1969, but really don't, uh, except for the fact that he gets to travel the world and visit uh, exotic places and cute girls uh, are there to be kissed by him hard. It's... It's, it's basically he meets a girl and, and then her lady in waiting who what the what is that I mean I realize I know what this term is but I mean 
we were still using the term lady in waiting in 1969? It's just like a girl's best, just a girl's best friend? I, I don't understand. This is weird. It's time to grow up, all right? It's, I play with these stupid metaphors. Anyway, um, no, you get, you basically get, uh, you, you get Dexter Riley in all sorts of trouble. Uh, the movie is an hour and a half long, but it felt longer at times. Because there's a whole sequence where we don't even get to see Dexter at all. It's all about his friends trying to save him from uh, impending doom. Uh, that uh, once the bad guys are done making use of him for his uh, abilities to mathematically determine how to win at horse racing, uh, they're going to dump him, dump him in a case and, I don't know, dump the body somewhere. He's, they're going to kill him. They're just gonna kill him, so that's just weird. Uh, it, 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 and they all pose. They're a bunch of college kids, and they find out where the gangsters are holding their friend, and they all pose as painters painting a house. Like this whole long sequence just seems like it was ultra padded for comedy, and also for time. Um, and they fall, and they can't paint right, and and they can't seem to stay up on their ladders or they're I don't know it's just uh, and then there's a car chase with a doom buggy and them pour, dumping paint on all of them and Cesar Romero who is obviously used to having his face all painted up not to this degree he gets just loads of paint dumped on his face as his stuntman is hanging out the edge of a car and they're shooting at these college students who have rescued their friend. Yes, I've given away too much, but really, it's not like it's a... The movie's been out for 40... 43 years? 42 years? I don't know. It's It's been a long time. 50 years? 50. It's been 50-some years, so, yeah, I'm sorry. I ruined that for you. Uh, the plot isn't so super important. It's more about just seeing characters... Exploiting Dexter again. He, for some reason, he's also a student. That he's about to get like kicked out of the campus because he's troublesome. Like, there's a meeting that all the people, the board members of the school, meet because they're losing money, they, and they decide, hey, by the way, also let's kick these dozen kids out. And they just happen to be all the characters that we get to meet in the course of this, because um, that's going to help. Just kick out some kids. And so far as we know, since this is the first film, they're not really troublemakers at all. They're just kids. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's something about we're supposed to know that they were they're troublesome. But you know, teenagers or, or college students are all they were trouble back in nineteen sixty nine. They were trouble to the man, trouble to the uh, establishment, let's just say that. So why not kick him out of college? Hippies. Anyway, uh, this is it's a goofy, fun movie. It's it's nothing. It's it's not going to change your life. But for those who grew up with it, it's no. You're going to want to revisit this. See how it's aged. Uh, for those who have no interest in this kind of this era of filming, you're not going to really get anything out of it. But uh, it might be a fun little throwback if you're interested in good, wholesome, silly fun. It's uh, it's one of these like I said it's one of these cult classics and you get to see Kurt Russell as uh, just this blue eyed baby faced kid he's not he's not Snake Plissken you know escaping from L A or anything he's not sky high as a superhero dad uh, he's a uh, he's he's a little he's a little Dexter Riley so if you're gonna watch any of these older films with him if you're a fan you're gonna want to start with this one and then you'll go to the now you see now you don't and then the strongest man in the world. Not like we did. We saw Strongest Man first, then this, and eventually, I imagine we'll see Now You See Him, Now You Don't. So, anyway, uh, you can really pass judgment on something like this. It's not, it's not like it's a bad film at all. It, it's just not a great film, but I think you could probably find have, have a lot of fun with it. It's good, wholesome fun, and uh, maybe little kids might get into it if you want to watch it with your grandkids. I don't know how old you are, if you have grandkids yet. Anyway. The computer wore tennis shoes, and I don't know why. I mean, there's no... I never saw tennis shoes in this, but 
Okay. Oh, one thing. One of the one of the things you want to watch this for is the moment they discover that he has these abilities, and they take him in to examine him publicly in front of um, the entire like school staff. Um, they take a, a doctor. You know how the doctor looks in your eyes and looks in your ears with the little scope. They they look right into his eyes with the scope, and then the camera cuts away to show what they see inside behind his eyes and it's blinking computer lights and stuff oh and by the way how he got this power was trying to attach a part during a rainstorm and he gets electrocuted and his feet start glowing and i, I okay there's the tennis shoes part his tennis shoes glowed and apparently did not provide enough protection to keep him from absorbing all the computer's knowledge yeah, and they expect him also to win all of the big, uh, I guess it's a trivia contest. It's not a trivia contest. It's just like a, I don't know. It's a competition of knowledge of math and science and history and things like that. And he's the only one who has to provide the answers. And he's kind of feeling used when they do that to him. It's kind of not cool. Yes, it's expected if you know everything, but come on. That's kind of rude. Anyway, he... When it, when you look when they look inside his head to see what's running things, it, it's awesome. It's just awesome. So, I, I enjoyed that part very much. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 388. 388. Oh, okay. I think we're going animated. Uh, this for another movie. You know, we haven't had a short in forever. We, have, there's, we haven't had a short since October, and we're now we're, we're deep into into December already. So we need we need a short at some point. But at this point, we've got number three eighty eight is Oliver and Company. Pretty sure that's all dogs. Disney loves their dogs. All right, Oliver and Company on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow.